Newton starts the Principia with some of his uh, Newton's laws, uh, his physics laws. One of them is, is, is the law of inertia. And very simply, the law of inertia says that a body in motion is going to stay in motion unless something, some, uh, and, and keep its same speed unless something else causes it to change speed. So if you have something like a, like a planet, and in some period of time it moves from here to here, let's say that happens in two seconds, uh, assuming nothing changes, two seconds later it will go from here to here, and these, these, these will be the same length. So that's, that's the law of uh, that's inertia. Uh, the second law, which I'm going to call the parallelogram law, basically says that if there's an object and it's being pushed by two different forces, one force is making it want to go in this direction, so it would end up over, over here, if, if only that force were there. But there's another force that's trying to push it in this direction, and if that were the only force, it would end up over here. Well, what Newton says is that these two forces can get, can get joined, and what will end up happening is that if you make a parallelogram, so I make this parallel to that, and this one parallel to this other one, that the object will actually go in this direction and end up, uh, end up over here. Now Newton's going to use these two rules to prove Kepler's, uh, Kepler's uh, one of Kepler's laws that planets sweep out equal areas in equal times. But in order to do that, Newton is going to create a simplified model of how um, objects uh, attract one another and how, um, how that changes their directions. And the basic idea is this. We have the sun here, we have a planet, and assuming the sun's not exerting any attractive force on the planet, in a certain period of time the planet moves from here whoops, to here. Now of course the sun is exerting a force and that force is pulling the planet towards it. But assuming the sun is not exerting a force for that period of time, the planet moved from here to here. And if the sun continues to not do any force, in the next interval of time, the planet would go from here to here. So I'll call this P, where the planet is now. And I'll call this P prime, where the planet will go if the sun does not have any, any force. But what happens is that the sun does exert a force, right? And, and, and the way Newton makes a simplified model is he says, let's say the sun's not continually exerting this force, pulling the planet towards it, but that it's, um, it, it does it in, in little impulses. So every, you know, every few minutes or every hour, just some fixed interval, the sun will exert some sort of impulse which will momentarily just pull the planet in and change the course of its direction. So let's say that right here, the sun uh, pulls, uh, exerts its force. So what happens if I draw a line from the center of the sun to the center of the planet? The force can be uh, illustrated by a vector, which I'll make as a sort of line segment. There's, there's the force. And how big this force is isn't important right now. The point is that there is some force. So the planet wants to go in this direction at this speed, but there's this pull from the sun to the planet that's pulling it towards it. Well, according to Newton's parallelogram law, that means that the planet will not end up over here at point P prime, but instead, if I were to make a parallelogram, Notice is it that, that this force here matches up with the length of this other uh, opposite side on the parallelogram. What happens is that instead, the parallelogram doesn't go from P to P prime, but instead it goes from P to Q. And then uh, another force 
can happen, which will be directed from Q towards S. And that force might be the same size as this one. It might be a different size. And the parallel, uh, parallelogram law will happen again. If it went from P to Q, it would like to go from Q, continuing in a straight line, the same distance to R, uh, sorry, to Q prime. But instead, because of this parallelogram law, it ends up over here at R. And what Newton's going to prove is in this simplified model that the area of triangle QPS, this area, will be the same as the area of triangle RQS. That at least in this simplified model where the sun pulses at fixed intervals, that these triangles will have the same area. And then you could imagine if the pulses become so close together, uh, you would have a bunch of, you, you could imagine the, the curve that happens instead of this sort of jagged line path, it would be more like a curve. Um, all the little tiny triangles that have the same number of triangles would add up to the same number of the other triangles and it would uh, make this work even for curves. And I'm gonna show you why that's true. Here's a nicer looking picture of the situation. So I wanna prove to you that at, at, uh, the area of SPQ, which is this, 7.44, is equal to the area of SQR, which is also 7.44. And that's gonna be actually true no matter what the force is, how big the force is, as long as the time intervals are the same, so equal areas in equal times. Uh, and the way we do that is actually using some theorems from, uh, from geometry. First of all, imagine that the planet goes from Q to P and the sun does not exert any force, then the planet will go from Q to Q prime. In that situation, you'll get a triangle again. Now these two triangles, uh, SQP, SPQ that is, and SQQ prime, those have to have the same areas. And that's basically because uh, if you imagine the triangle with this as the base, from Q to Q prime could be the base of the top triangle, and from Q to P is the base of the, of the other triangle. But the heights of these two triangles are the same, because if we, if we drew an altitude from S down to P Q prime, that, that would be the same. So one half base times height would be the same for both of those triangles. They have the actual same length base. So those two triangles have the same uh, base, but that's not, what, that's not what we're trying to prove, but that's gonna help us prove it. Now triangle RQS, I want to show you that that has to have the same area as Q prime QS. And that was actually pretty easy to prove. Those two triangles have the same base. If I think of the base of, as SQ, both of them have base SQ. Um, but because RQ prime is parallel to SQ, these two triangles have to have the, the, the same height. If I, if I drew a perpendicular line from R down to uh, SQ, it would be the same height as the perpendicular line from Q prime to line SQ. So those two triangles have literally the same base and their heights are the same because those two lines are, are, are parallel. So what that means is that these two triangles have the same area also and by the transitive property, that also means that um, the original triangle, SQP, has the same area as SQR. Now if the time intervals were, uh, were shorter and the force was smaller, we'd have smaller triangles that have the same area. And if you put a whole bunch of those triangles together, you get something that's like a curve, uh, something bounded by a curve, which is uh, the actual situation. So that proves new, uh, Kepler's equal times and equal areas law or equal areas and equal time law, which Newton's gonna use together with the Galileo uh, theorem from, the, from part one. So Newton's big idea is to have this impulse model where the sun, uh, instead of having continuous force, does it in, in these pulses. And that's gonna come in handy uh, in the next section. So this is a good place to stop Newton's Principia Explained, part two. Please keep watching.